Iran, Algeria's second largest city. We're excited for Tlemcen. We are currently in the highest city in all of Algeria. Yeah. Am I going to be able to do this? We should be able to do this. Stunning. You wouldn't think in really like a small village on the outskirts of the city you'd find a mosque this beautiful. For a small city, there's actually so much to do. Are you scared of heights? Of course not. Are you scared of heights? Shway, shway. Saha. Cheers. Morning from the balconies above the streets of Oran, Algeria's second largest city. We're just sitting on the edge of the balcony, but we will go with it. Today is actually our last day in the region before heading back to Algiers tomorrow. And we're going on a bit of a road trip. We are heading to Tlem. Sen, which is the second largest city in the northwest region, full of historical sites and some natural wonders. Apparently, even a waterfall. We have about a two hour drive. I need to get off this balcony. But just check out these guys over here. They're on the Grand Bank. Oh, I couldn't do that. Could you do that job? They've been hanging there all morning, cleaning the windows. They're a lot braver than me. Anyway, two hour road trip. Back in our minivan, Tlemcen. I'm gonna miss staying at this hotel, the M Gallery in Oran. You can stay in any modern hotel, but to stay within history, it's like a walking museum. It's been unbelievable. Good morning. How are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? Are you ready you? for Tlemcen? Yes. I'm already. excited. I've been here since nine o'clock. Nine o'clock? Yeah. Are you You're crazy? eager. Are you no. bashful? <laughs> Good morning. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. 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 Hello. Nice to meet you. Hey. How are you? I'm really good. We're excited for Tlemcen. Back in the minivan. Back in the van. <laughs> After a two and a half hour drive, we have made it to Tlemcen. To be honest, it's pretty much a boring drive. It's like a highway, there's not really much to see or show you, hence why we have arrived just outside of the city. And actually today we are lucky enough to have two local experts with us. So we have Red, who was with us yesterday exploring Oran, and we also have Emin from Fancy Yellow. So we are, I would say we're pretty lucky to have two experts showing us around and we're stopping first I don't know if you can hear, I can, there's some I can water. Hear somewhere over somewhere <laughs> is a waterfall. But just look at this location. We are currently in the highest city in all of Algeria. We are indeed. So it's not just the highest city, this is also the highest waterfalls in all of Algeria. And it was a short walk, I can hear it. And somewhere down there, I'm gonna save it as a surprise. Somewhere down there is the Orit waterfalls, the highest in the whole country. It's actually free to enter and just a two minute walk down some stairs, we have made it to the waterfalls. This bridge is freaky, Majnoon, as they would say. Um, but yeah, we could hear the water. We actually thought that we were going to be like teased by the sound of water and the fact that there's this beautiful we waterfall. Could swim. There's no and that we could swim, but no, we're not going to swim. We need Here to watch this is bridge. The Orit Bazoom <laughs> waterfall. It'll probably be better during rainy season. Yeah, right now it's a it's a slow flow. So it turns out that it's actually an artificial waterfall. So it will always be this strong. They pump it up with these pumps so you can enjoy the waterfall all year round. But we've embarked on a little bit of an adventure, a small hike to get right. Oh my gosh, I'm falling back. I'm good, I'm good, thank you. A small hike to get to the rock below the waterfall. Um, yeah. Am I going to be able to do this? We should be able to do this. From waterfalls, we have made it to the religious complex of Sidi Boumedine. It's basically the uh, mosque and tomb here, and it feels more like a village. Like, there's people living around us right now, but you would actually think by looking at it and by walking around that this is its own little village. But really, people just come here to pray and sort of give their respects. But look at the streets, aren't they gorgeous? It, does, it doesn't feel like a city. It really doesn't. 
I was not expecting outside a complex to have little souvenirs. It's so sweet. There's like little pots with um, Arabic writing on, and you can see the detailing of the mosque is insane. This will actually be the first that we've truly visited. Mosque we've seen that we've from truly outside. visited. We're, actually, we're getting involved finally. Thank you very much. Wow, this place is incredible. Because a lot of Tlemcen used to be fortified over different dynasties, the mosque itself, it feels more like a village than just a mosque. You've got this small little town outside and then you come in, Molly is covering up and it's stunning. You wouldn't think in really like a small village on the outskirts of the city you'd find a mosque this beautiful. Hello, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you. Saha. Oh wow! This is stunning! Isn't it beautiful? You have all the coloured tiles. It's actually closing right now, so we've been really lucky to get inside. But you can see how it is made all the way around with the courtyard in the middle, the fountain. It's really open air. It feels like a dar. Yeah, it's like a, a dar. Like a dar with the fountain in the centre. Um, basically, it's originated from Levantine. So as you can see, all of their houses are kind of like a dar. It has the fountain in the middle and all. So that's why the architecture is it's influenced different. by that. Yeah. It's very unique. It, indeed, yeah, like mostly uh, like from, from the Spaniards and the Andalusian uh, culture. Thank you, sir. What makes this mosque even more unique is that below it, you have the old remains of the fortress. This was a fortress and a dar of the Sultan and it came before the mosque, like I was saying, a lot of Tlemcen used to be fortified over different dynasties. You've got incredible views over the countryside. And then the minaret, look, you can just see, so you'd have the fortress and then above the minaret and the mosque. On the way out, we had to stop at one of the souvenir shops. And I don't know why, but I just really liked this one. And They've translated it for us. Imin has translated it for us, and she said that on the back, this is like a verse that they say when they go travelling for prayer. And uh, uh, this just says, "Thank God." Thank God. And in Arabic, it says "Tlemcen." So I feel like this is a must. And it's this handmade is by my friend. Handmade. He made so he makes all of these yeah, himself. Yeah. And this is done by olives. Yeah, this is a branch of an olive tree, and he makes it. Uh, he, he buys them from someone who, who oh, that's that's nice. that's nice. that's okay. I, I really want to get it. It's so cool. Thank you. Wait. Thanks so much. He was literally here painting the pots. Yeah, I know. He's got all these pots. If we didn't have just hand luggage, I think I would definitely get one of those little pots because he's got plants in them in there. They're so cool. Thank you so much. Saha, thank you. So the plan was actually to visit the palace in the city centre but unfortunately it's closed today so we're going to just explore as much of the centre as possible and you'll notice straight away the architecture here is very different. They kept a lot of their traditions. You won't notice many colonial buildings or high rises. It's a very traditional Algerian city, what you'd have found maybe two, three hundred years ago. Clemson definitely feels more like a village. I'm getting village vibes from it, but we've come into Kaisaria Market, which is really famous here. And it's kind of like a traditional soup. They have lots no of things soups. for bridles. We yeah. Getting lost in I lost know. Soups keep getting lost in soups and keep buying things as well. This is really cool. We've only just walked into the souk and we've been invited into a shop where a man sharpens oh wow so these are all the knives for sale and this man here is sharpening the knives this is so cool so you come here you bring your knife have it sharpened or you can come and buy a freshly sharpened knife how long have they been doing it here for do you know Nineteen, nineteen thirty-three. Wow, so nearly a hundred years. Yeah. So we're going in. You can see the machine here. They've been using for almost one hundred years. Wow. I can come around. Yeah, you can enter. Oh wow! Look at this. 
the right system. I not much of Chelsea. Me? Uh, Chelsea. 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 And you? Oh, Man City. Man City? Mares. Mares. Oh, it's very good. Wow. And this is the machine. You can see it's running on old belts. It comes down here. And this is where it will sharpen your knife. Okay, and how so many knives a day does he sharpen? He said that he gets knives from the morning and he starts sharpening, sharpening, sharpening until okay. he finishes them all. Okay. Like this. All of these all of are these? made by him. You made them? Wow. Them. By him. And people will bring them, he'll sharpen them, and they'll pick them back up in yeah, the evening. Yeah, and since it's uh, the aid uh, uh, time, yeah. he's sharpening more and more knives. Wow, ready for slaughter. Yeah, I'm ready for slaughter now. Cool. Thank you, Saha. Very much. Thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you. What an interesting shop, what an interesting guy, he'd been doing it there since 1960. He'd been working for over 60 years sharpening knives. Can you imagine how many knives he sharpened and only for 100 dinar you can take your knife there, drop it off and pick it up in the evening freshly sharpened, ready for Eid, ready for the slaughter. For a small city there's actually so much to do here. We're actually going to head up to a viewpoint called Lela Seti right now, but we're going to get there by Tele... Do they call it Telefonique or Telefonique? I'm not sure, cable but you, behind me you can see the yellow cable cars. There's actually three stops along the way and they go over and up into the mountains. It's going to be pretty cool and scary. There's actually three stations of the cable car. There's the one from down below in the city that people will get up to this point, whether they're going home or they're going shopping or whatever, and then one to the very top of the mountain that we're getting, which is more just for tourists, and it's only 30 dinar per person. So that is like, I don't know, it's like 10 English pence. That's ridiculous. Right, we're ready. Oh. Should I go? Okay. Oh, this is nicer than the one in Algiers. Oh, it's quite big actually. Ooh, it's and we spacious. get it for ourselves. And we get it with just us four, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. And, and we're we off. Are off. Look at this. This is actually, you know, she, uh, I mean, was like, are you scared of heights? And I was like, are you scared of heights? No. <laughs> are you scared of heights? Of course not. The are only you scared thing, of heights? Shway, shway. The only thing I don't like about going in cable cars is the breeze coming through because it makes it rock. But this is pretty stable, and the views are incredible. top of the mountain and this is where a lot of locals or tourists will come they'll have picnics they'll check out the views of Tlemcen below and they say Tlemcen is basically like a city that is one big expanding village I think that's the nicest way to describe it and there's even a huge five-star hotel up here the Hotel Renaissance and look at these views you can really see how vast the city is it goes for so far and the village city the vi yeah it, like it's a city but honestly i can't tell you how it looks and feels like a village it's also very green and literally for 30 dinner you can come up here and spend a couple of hours relaxing it's a nice place to come not a bad view at all i don't know why i've never been so i'm probably waffling but it reminds me a lot of what you see in some of the south american cities maybe bolivia the city below cable car coming up to look down and enjoy the views. I'm waffling. It just reminds me of things I've seen online. This is Clemson, not Bolivia. We didn't think we were gonna be able to make it, but we have to the random hotel on top of the hill, which seems pretty empty, but I like the fact that they have embraced the local architecture when making the Renaissance Hotel. And it's a mission. Just walking here is further than walking the whole city of Femsen. But we're hoping we're going to be able to get a drink and cool down. And maybe, I'm not sure, we could be the only guests in the Renaissance Hotel on top of the hill mountain of Femsen. We've all been practicing our posh accent. And our posh walk. To blend in. <laughs> I don't think we're going to blend in that well. This is ridiculous. We literally tried getting in 
this gate here, but we had to do like a 360. We had to literally walk the whole way around. Uh, here, if that's okay, thank you. We had to walk the whole way around. Um, and but we found out they do beer. We found the bar, of course, and they have an amazing little seating area. Thank you so, so we're much. Sit here. Thank Saha. you so much. Saha. Cheers. I wasn't even coming here for a beer. It's probably the only bar in Tlemcen, but they've done it again. We have a, what is Gosto? We have a Gosto glass with a Heineken beer. The Algerian beer, they actually had it. But it was warm, so we opted for Heineken, which we wouldn't normally do, but Heineken's ice cold. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's, it's so refreshing having Thank two you. young locals show us around their so hometown. Much. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed yeah. it and we hope to see you again. For yeah. sure. We'll be back. Hope this isn't goodbye. You. This is see you again. See you again. See you again. <laughs> And we are back in Oran. That was the flipping craziest hotel ever that turned out to be the best thing ever. Not just because we had a beer, but it was so random. It was this five-star palace-like resort on top of the quaint little village-like city of Tlemcen. It didn't fit in at all. There were like 500 rooms and there was literally no guests. It was, it was really, it, I, I don't even know. It was random but sort of cool at the same time. But on the way back to Oran, we stopped at the old remains of the mosque. We're in the Manfora. So the Manfora is, uh, or what's remaining of it, is a mosque built by the Marinids when they seized the city of Tlemcen between 1299 and 1306. So they built the castle, the mosque, and, the, and some houses for the soldiers. But what, what's remaining today is only the minaret of the mosque. This is really impressive. I don't think I've seen the remains of a mosque or a minaret like this anywhere in the world before. This would have been the highest minaret in the city and because it has the five columns at the top, the five windows, this would have been classed as the mosque of the entire city of Tlemcen. And this behind me would have been the inside of the mosque. You can see just how vast it is. Just imagine a roof on top and this would have been where everyone prayed. And you can see where nature has started to reclaim the mosque, this tree, 240 years old. And then we said goodbye to Red and Imen who are so good, honestly, they're passionate, they're young and they're gonna go really, really far. I love the passion that they have for their hometown. I wish I had that back at home, but it is our last night in Oran and we're actually having dinner in the hotel at the a la carte restaurant, which we've heard is pretty fancy and I am not dressed fancy at all. I, I smell from the heat, the sweat, I don't fit in. to the Les Ambassadeurs restaurant in the hotel. There's like two and the bar, and this is the one, look how fancy it is. It's like going through history. This is outrageous. It is literally a museum. You've got all the paintings on the wall, it's all lovely. the vases. I'm scared to touch anything. I'm a bit of a bull in the charge book, so I'll definitely knock something over. This is extremely posh. This is as posh as it gets. I don't even think we're posh enough for this. Should we leave? Yeah. We're a bit late. If we come earlier, we could have gone in their, their terrace. This is well nice. The tram runs straight past it. Did you hear it go ding, ding? Cheers. Cheers. This, this is too posh. This is very posh. They have a very extensive wine menu. So we have no idea about wine, so we're sticking to water. But we've got our food ordered. And it was, it was difficult because all the food is, is very fancy. The fanciest dishes and two non-fancy people. I've gone for... Angostines? <laughs> I didn't even know that was a type of prawn stroke Shrimp. <laughs> lobster with creamy rice, a lime. I'm probably doing this wrong. And um, what is this pointy thing? It looks interesting. Posh bread. Posh bread. <laughs> Hold on. I'm so excited. I'm not. I don't know how you eat posh. Just, just cut it. Oh, everyone's looking at me. No one's looking at you. Oh, that looks good. It's meaty. Big bit of rice. Here we go. Oh wow. Are they different? They're different. Much sweeter than prawns. This is a big step for you, Mr. Non-Fish Eater. 
It's good. Slemsen, what an interesting, interesting city, town, whatever you want to call it. Definitely feels more like a village and there's just so much to see and do. It was a shame that some of it was closed, but being able to explore it with Imen and Red was very unique. It's so refreshing to be with two young people who are out and studying and we can get their perspective on the place that they live in it's really 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 good none of it would have been able to be done without fancy yellow and um, this trip has just been unbelievable but last night we had an insane fancy dinner at the hotel um it was absolutely crazy things that me and matt probably would never have eaten he had the like langoustines and i had like steak we we're really trying to trying to be fancy there but it was incredible and we got an early flight back to algiers first thing this morning we have a couple more days before our time in this country comes to an end so we will see you in the next one doing something here in algiers <laughs>